can generate a pretty good spherical surface. I'm willing to guess that I probably can also generate a pretty good flat surface. Everything feels pretty good. I think the real key to doing this is patience. So I'm hoping that I can get these surfaces done in a reasonable period of time. I have another project that, project that I'm working on, a 12 and a half inch mirror that's completely ground out now and I need to polish that. So I may take a break from the flat project to work on the 12 and a half inch project. One of the problems with working in a basement, and we'll discuss this later when we start talking about pitch laps, is that in the winter it can get cold. Now pitch reacts uh, differently at different temperatures, and it has to be there has to be a certain amount of flow in it. It can't get too hard. The type of pitch I use is called Gugol's pitch. It comes in five different grades, from very soft to very hard, from I believe it's 63 or 64 to 91, with 91 being the hardest and 63 or 64 being the softest. Softest. I generally use number 73, but when my basement gets cold, when it gets into the low, you know, the high 30s, low 40s, uh, temperature-wise down here, that pitch really just becomes too hard to polish. So here I am in August. I'm thinking about this telescope that I want to work on at Dick Parker's uh, telescope workshop over the winter, and I'm thinking that I need to get the mirror at least polished out before it gets too cold down here. The flats are a nice project, it's more of a long-term type thing, and if I have to wait till next summer before I can really start polishing it, or next spring before I can really start polishing it, it's not the end of the world, so be it. But I, I am probably going to give the flat project a break for a little while once I get the fine grinding completed so that I can work on the, on the 12 and a half inch project. And then when it comes to figuring it, I'll bring it to, to Dick Parker's workshop, we'll do the figuring, and then once it's figured, and that may not take all that long, but once it's figured, then we'll go and uh, work on polishing flats. <coughs> I hope you're having a, a good time watching and learning about what I'm doing. I've now completed the first iteration. I've done my E on top of the D surface. I'm going to take the D surface off, place the E surface down, Take my F surface, double check the side, okay, make sure I've got the F surface where I need it, let's see. The D surface is now on the bottom. Oh, I'm confused, no, I'm doing, I'm doing this right. Fortunately, I'll write things down. And it's now 2.23. I'm going to go 15 minutes on this surface. And again, these surfaces are grinding together really well. They just, they just feel good. You know, some other things you have to be aware of. Uh, many of us are married, many of us wear wedding bands. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm remarried. I, my wife uh, put my wedding band on my finger on uh, March 22, 2006. It hasn't come off. An area sometimes of concern when you're grinding because you don't want to scratch the optical surfaces. Just a personal thing to be aware of. Be careful if you're one of those people like me that's not going to take the wedding band off to show your undying love and fidelity for your wife, then make sure that uh, you know, you, you're aware of it as you're polishing and don't let it scratch the surfaces that you're working on. Or you'll be frustrated. Again, you know, none of this is life and death. This is a hobby. So keep things in perspective and enjoy it. But be careful, because you want to do a really good job. It's just fun to do a really good job with this stuff. Easy, one-third stroke, center over center. Don't get crazy. 
there is a video on YouTube of a Frenchman grinding out Yes, Danielle. While I was away, I received a couple of phone calls, and so I went an extra minute on the uh, on the uh, fine grinding. Generally speaking, if you get a lot of phone calls, that's not a good time of day to uh, be doing mirror making if people need to talk to you. You know, I have professional responsibilities. Today is a Saturday. In fact, it's a Saturday afternoon, and it's not such a bad Saturday afternoon either. It's kind of a nice Saturday afternoon. I thought people would be outside playing and I could do my telescopes. But in fact, they're not. It's just part of life. You just have to deal with it. Um, I sleep pretty well most of the time. Last couple of days, I've gotten up for some reason about four in the morning. Nobody calls at four in the morning. And so I come downstairs sometimes between four and five, and I knock off an hour of grinding. It's, it's just something I enjoy doing. I also uh, like to do it in the evening. Uh, the only conflict being that uh, the Yankees play, and I really like to watch the Yankees. In fact, they're playing right now. Uh, they're about five and a half games behind Boston, two games out of the wild card behind Seattle. And uh, Chin Ming Wong is on, the, is on the hill, and it should be a good game after the Moose uh, has had a hard time. I, I rarely see them win, or I see them lose, rather. In fact, I used to tell people every time I watch them, uh, they, they win, and then I tell people I have a contract with Steinbrenner to watch the Yankees because uh, they can't win if I'm not watching. Just things to think about. This is not, this is mind-numbing work to a large degree, but if you want to do an optical flat, if you want to do, you know, make a telescope, this is what it takes, a long time, a lot of just glass over glass, just pushing away. As I was saying on YouTube, there's a, uh, a guy, I think he's from France, I don't think he's Canadian, uh, who, is, uh, who made a phenomenal set of binoculars. I think ultimately he said he'd sell it for about 10,000 euro, which is uh, a substantial amount of money U.S. also. Uh, and he has uh, his fine grind, or his uh, rough grinding, in the garage, and you can see that he's going at it with wild abandon, making his own mirrors. The man's an incredible craftsman, has made some absolutely phenomenal binoculars, a very large aperture. I guess, I think it was a 300 millimeter, 30 centimeter uh, binocular, which translates, I think, to somewhere just under uh, 12 inches, not a whole lot under 12 inches. Um, and uh, to watch him go at it and the little device he's made to uh, assist him in, uh, in the grinding and the weights he's put on and the vigor with which he works on his telescope is absolutely inspiring. Absolutely. Five minutes. Shake up my number five aluminum oxide. Put a little more on. This is the last of the three wets. With this, it's now 234. I'll go to 240. 
hope the telephone doesn't ring, but I'm not a betting man, but if I was, I don't think I'd take that bet. You know, if you want to do this and you don't know how or you have any concerns, I would invite you to contact me. You can reach me. Uh, the best way to reach me is through my email address, which is F O R. E I L L Y at bestweb.net. B E 